Is ChatGPT Pro worth it? OpenAI has released a new $200 a month subscription plan that provides unlimited access to GPT-40, O1, and they also provide access to their most advanced model right now, which is called O1 Pro Mode. And as you guys see right here, I went ahead and purchased ChatGPT Pro for $200 so I could make this video for you and help answer the question of is ChatGPT Pro worth it? So be sure to stick around for the entire video. Now, very quick disclaimer as I was testing O1 Pro Mode before this video. I'm not very technical, I don't understand coding or web development, and honestly, I'm not really that smart in general in the scheme of things, guys. So keep that in mind as I show these examples with O1 Pro Mode, I tried to make it as applicable as possible to most people. And if this is your first time to the channel, welcome. My name is Ryan, and my mission is to help you navigate the overwhelming world of artificial intelligence. And if you want to know my favorite AI tools and prompts that I use for marketing and content creation, be sure to get my free AI marketing essentials guide. You can find the link for that below this video. But now let's dive back in to ChatGPT Pro. So when it comes to answering the question of is ChatGPT Pro worth it or not, the very first thing we need to look at are the features that you get with it, of course. And so right here, I'm on ChatGPT's pricing page, and I'll leave a link to this in the description below. And here is the new $200 a month tier right there. You can still subscribe to Plus for $20 a month and, of course, start using ChatGPT for free if you want to do that as well. So what exactly do you get with ChatGPT Pro? Well, number one, everything in the plus tier and sheesh I would sure hope so when it costs 10 times more at $200 a month to $20 a month. This includes custom GPTs, access to O1 and O1 Mini, advanced voice mode, image generation with Dolly 3, advanced data analysis, etc, etc. But the next point I think is a big deal. Unlimited access to GPT-40 and O1. Even on ChatGPT Plus, you still have limited access. And I'm going to talk about that in a little bit as I've rarely run out of that access and I do find myself using ChatGPT Plus every single day. But you do get unlimited access to these models and they are very good models. You also have to understand it is not cheap to power advanced AI models behind the scenes with energy costs. I think that's a point that a lot of people miss. You also get unlimited access to advanced voice mode. I don't find myself using this feature too much. Sometimes I'll be driving and I'll be on the phone like chatting with it. If I have an idea for YouTube videos or just an idea for my business so it doesn't get lost, I'll find myself doing that. I don't really use the desktop version, but if you use advanced voice mode, this could be a good feature for you. And right here is arguably the most important feature of ChatGPT Pro is access to O1 Pro mode. This is OpenAI's most advanced model right now. As they say, this uses more compute for the the best answers to the hardest questions. And if I pull up my ChatGPT account, you'll see O1 Pro Mode right here. And if I hop over to ChatGPT's Pro page, here are the benchmarks for the new O1 Pro model. Right here, they test PhD level science questions, competition code, competition math. And so right here in the darker orange, that is O1 Pro. It is outperforming obviously O1 and also O1 Preview. So it looks like on the PhD level science, not that huge of a margin. If you look at O1 Pro compared to O1 Preview when it comes to coding, that's a pretty stark difference, but it's neck and neck with O1. At least it looks like according to this benchmark. Math, there's a really drastic difference. It says 86 out of 100 on this score, whatever they're testing or evaluating, I don't know, but 86 right here compared to 50. That is a drastic change. And they also have some more benchmarks down here. Um, and you guys can check out this page for more information on O1 Pro, O1, or ChatGPT Pro. But I really just want to circle back and say that is probably the biggest feature of ChatGPT Pro is access to OpenAI's most advanced model, which is called O1 Pro Mode. So now let's put this O1 Pro Mode to the test. And what I did in this example is I asked it to write a generic SEO optimized blog post when I provide a target keyword. I also did the same thing on the regular O1 model and also GPT-40. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare my outputs and then also run these through an AI content detector to see if we can humanize it and bypass these detectors. I feel like this is a very applicable example to a lot of people is using these AI models for content creation and trying to humanize the outputs as much as possible. 
So here's the basic prompt that I asked it. And the very first thing that I noticed with O1 Pro Mode is it did take a while to process my prompts. This two sentence prompt took it 14 seconds to process and then reply. So then I gave it my target keyword and that took an additional 53 seconds to process and even more time to generate the actual blog post. What I also notice is if you click this on the right hand side, it provides you with details. Now you'll see in my example, it says no details available and I would have to imagine that that's because my prompt isn't very advanced or sophisticated. But if you're doing something more advanced, it will actually provide details on its on its thought process as it's reading through your prompts and figuring out how to, how to provide the best responses. But anyways, here is the actual blog post that it came up with. I went ahead and quickly read through all of these before I hit record, and this isn't bad. Just scrolling through this, right? Something that I could definitely use on my website with a little fine tuning. And then what I did is I copy and pasted this because I'm curious to see if it would bypass AI content detectors. I went over to zero GPT, copy and pasted the entire thing from O1 Pro Mode, and you'll see here 73.3% AI GPT. So it did not pass this content detection test. And now I'm gonna come over to O1. So my output with O1 honestly was not good at all. I would not use this and O1 is not really known for that. It's not a very creative AI model compared to others out there. I'm not even gonna test this in the AI content detector because I would never use this just quickly looking at it. GPT-40, on the other hand, actually was pretty good. This model is more creative than traditional O1. And what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna copy and paste Let's copy and paste the entire blog post provided by GPT-40. I'm gonna refresh zero GPT. Let's paste the text in here. And I'm going to click detect text. Remember the last one was 73% AI GPT. This one is 77.3%. So this even had more content detected as AI versus O1 Pro mode. So now what I did is I came back to my responses on O1 Pro Mode and I said, humanize this content so it's 100% humanized and successfully passes AI detectors and scores 0% AI detectable. You can find that prompt in the description below if you wanna use it. And you'll see it took a minute and 11 seconds for O1 Pro Mode to process this. And if I click it, I now have some details on the right hand side. So this is kind of cool to see. It says creating human-like text. I'm transforming the content to 100% human language, da da da, you guys can read that if you want. And so then what it did is it generated a new blog post. I copy and pasted it into zero GPT and I got 29.51% AI detectable. If you remember, I was at 73%, so a pretty significant drop there. Now I did the exact same example with GPT-40. I said, humanize this, I gave it the same prompt copy and pasted this new blog post into zero GPT and I got 86.12% AI detectable. It was even higher than the first time when I didn't even mention anything about humanizing it. So in this very first example, as you can see, OpenAI O1 Pro Mode, at least in this example of humanizing content, did get the job done. But that doesn't mean it's worth $200 a month in my opinion. I think this is just a very applicable example that I wanted to share with you. So I wanted to show you one more example that I thought would be applicable to a lot of you, and that's running what's called a SWOT analysis. SWOT standing for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. This is one of the most popular frameworks for evaluating businesses, brands, and even YouTube channels like I did in this example. So I asked O1 Promo to run a SWOT analysis on this YouTube channel, and it gave me strengths, weaknesses. I'm not gonna go through all of these. One weakness that made me laugh was production quality limitations. Kind of true, I don't even have lighting. I'm using OBS Studio, which is free. I use iMovie to edit. So that's funny that it had that one in there. But it provided a good overview of really what my strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats are. And then it gave me strategic takeaways at the end. And obviously this is good information to have. But then what I did is I said, based on my opportunities, create a 30-day content calendar of YouTube videos I should make that will move the needle. Also provide a plan of distributing that content to other mediums. So first it evaluated my content theme. It took 50 seconds for it to analyze this prompt. First of all, gives you some details here on the right-hand side. And then it provided a 30-day YouTube content calendar. 
week one, foundation and intermediate trends, uh, latest AI news recap. So some of these aren't bad ideas. I'm already doing some of them. Uh, then it gave me some distribution strategies, YouTube shorts, social media channels, TikTok, Instagram reels, email newsletter and blog posts, uh, implementation tips, et cetera, et cetera. Now, this isn't perfect by any means. I just wanted to show you why something like O1 Pro Mode would be useful, and that is for something like a SWOT analysis, which requires advanced reasoning and strategizing. So I want to wrap this all up by comparing ChatGPT Pro to ChatGPT Plus. That was the number one question I had when OpenAI announced this. Is this new ChatGPT Pro model 10 times more valuable than what you get for ChatGPT Plus? And after testing things around and even just looking at the different features, my overwhelming answer to this for most people is no, it is not worth it. Now, there are some one-off use cases, right, where let's say you're a big enterprise and you have unlimited resources or dollars to spend. Okay, might be worth trying ChatGPT Pro, right? You don't have much to lose in that case. Or let's say you're heavily involved in coding or web development or building apps. I could see ChatGPT Pro being very useful there. Or if you're an entrepreneur running your own company and you are a power user, you're running out of limits or usage on ChatGPT Plus every single day, I could see a justify I could justify ChatGPT Pro in that scenario as well. But for most people, what you get on ChatGPT Plus for only $20 a month should produce an ROI. If you don't get an ROI off a $20 a month investment in ChatGPT Plus, you're using it wrong in my opinion. I use this every single day for custom GPTs, content repurposing, content generation, ideation, and there's so many different other things that I talk about on my channel. And when it comes to OpenAI's selling point of unlimited access to GPT-40 and 01 and also advanced voice mode, I'm going to be honest, I would consider myself probably in the 1% of people that use ChatGPT+. Plus. I use it every single day for various tasks related to marketing and content creation. I've rarely run out of usage limits. I use GPT-40 for most things. I wasn't using O1 Preview. It didn't really make sense in my use cases. But even with O1, you still have a good amount of usage where if you're using this tool, even every single day, there should be very rare instances where you're running out of credits. Where I could see this is if you're using advanced voice mode a lot or if you're generating a lot of images with Dolly 3, that can increase your usage limit very quickly. But for most general text outputs with GPT-40, I have yet to run out of usage only maybe a couple times at this point since I've been on chat GPT plus. So I think for most people, again, this unlimited access is overhyped for most use cases. And also when it comes to O1 pro mode, as you just saw in those examples, this is a very good model. There is no denying that, but for 10 times the price, is O1 Pro Mode better than what you get with ChatGPT's official version of O1 now out of preview mode? I don't know the answer to that. I don't think it's a definitive yes, in my opinion. Now, if you're doing something coding related, okay, I could maybe see a different answer there. But for my use case, I don't see O1 Pro Mode being 10 times more valuable than O1 or even GPT-40 for that matter. Plus, you got Claude 3.5 Sonnet in the mix. You can't always throw those models out as well. But as I'm rambling on here and circling back to the main question, for most people, ChatGPT Pro is not worth it in my opinion. And if you're not even subscribed to ChatGPT Plus and you're trying to just rely on the free plan, you need to at least invest $20 a month in ChatGPT Plus to get the most out of this tool in my opinion. So with all of that being said, if you guys appreciate me purchasing this $200 a month subscription just so I can make a video for you guys, be sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. But I also want to hear what you have to say in the comments below. Do you think ChatGPT Pro is worth it? Is this something you're going to invest in? Want to know what you guys have to say. But most importantly, I hope you all have a great day.